Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection Season 2, Episode 3. If you want to watch Season 1, I'll drop a link in the description box below. Today, we're going to be putting together a color story and listen to me very carefully. I'm a very organized person, so you saw my box of markers that are organized by color, and then I have other boxes that are just neutrals and one that's all grays. And then I make all these color cards sorted by medium, like I have marker color cards, color pencil color cards, and et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing I do is go through all of my markers, go through my color cards and pull the ones that, you know, it's like a brainstorming session. I just pull any color that I think I might vaguely be interested in adding to my color story. And then I take some marker paper that I kind of don't love. Okay. Okay. The Bian Fang is my favorite brand of marker paper. There are some other good ones, but that one is my favorite. This one is not my favorite. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's not my favorite. So I use it for stuff like this. So I make color chips of all the marker colors that I think might work for this project. And here I go. I am just making color chips. And then I'm going to cut them out and start playing with it and putting together color stories. But I want... I want you to hear me, okay? <laughs> I wanted this collection to be an all-white color story so bad. Every time I look at it, you know, because I may have mentioned this in my Instagram captions when I post uh, the prelim sketches, that when I'm working and designing and I have kind of a unconventional silhouette happening and I haven't decided my color story yet I will color in the skin so that I can see the design clearly and the shape of the design clearly even though I haven't colored it in you see doing the reverse and I had been doing that and the more I kept doing that the more I was like oh this all white look is is bomb. I love it. This, and you know, there's so much going on. Okay. If you have watched the first two episodes of the series, you know, this collection has so much going on. It's got more layers of ruffles than you can count. It's got Monopoly game pieces. It's got a lot of beating. It's got graffiti. It's got marionette vibes. Like it's got a lot going on. So I figure why not remove one element before we go nuts. Right. However, However, you know, I am teacher, also designer, teacher, designer, designer, teacher. I don't know what comes first. I mean, chronologically, the designing came first. But I was like, oh. it's not a very educational, it's not a very teaching moment to have an all-white collection. And people probably want to learn more about how to put together color stories. And I have a lot of color videos. I'll drop, I'll drop those videos in the description box below too. But I'm like, okay, so we should do a color story to be all educational and things. I contemplated this, contemplated that, asked everyone watching to throw me their ideas. And so I have decided that I really want to do pastels. And I was actually really inspired by Christopher John Rogers and how he often in his collections, he'll do some kind of rainbow with some grounding neutrals. I really noticed this because I did a Christopher John Rogers deep dive in one of my Patreon fashion design lessons, like go to patreon.com slash Zoe Hong. There's a link in my description box if you want to like take fashion design deep dive classes. But yeah, we we're I was showing off how Christopher John Rogers chooses his color stories and how, you know, he will do so many colors. He'll do like a whole rainbow vibe. But at the same time, it doesn't look overly chaotic because he chooses a kind of like a tone story every time he does a rainbow. Like one season, he'll do like a jewel-toned rainbow story. One season, he'll do more of a neon rainbow color story. So because he keeps like the tone and the attitude and the mood of the colors in the same family, even though he has so many colors going on, it still looks cohesive. It doesn't look too all over the place because as colorful 
as his stuff is, I don't think Christopher John Rogers could be considered a maximalist, you know, where there's like a hundred prints layered on top of each other. And there's like a lot of eclectic jewelry and accessories and add-ons. Like he's not a maximalist. That's not an insult. That's just a what is. And so, yeah, I think the vibe I'm going for in this collection here is more maximalist than Christopher John Rogers. So I think that this just sticking to a pastel like, a bright pastel, not like a super pale uh, little girl on an Easter egg hunt pastel, but like a bright pastels story, I think would be great. And I do want some grounding neutrals because you, I think it'll be good and have an option to play with. And let me tell you something, okay? When you see fashion shows, you know, collections on the runway, you know, you see, you're seeing marketing and PR presentation. And so designers and stylists and whoever is putting these shows together, they are putting together the color combination on the runway that is going to make the most splash and show off the most like, oh, this is who we are sort of color story. But what gets sold in the stores and what gets shown on the runway in many different ways are completely different, and that includes the colors. I'm not going to do any pieces in black for the for the illustrations, but if I were to make this collection in real life, my guess is, I mean, I don't know for sure yet because I have so many, I have yet to start designing silhouettes yet, but my guess would be that I would be selling more of these pieces in neutral, especially black. Just go to any online shops, whether it's solely for the designer or more department store like Neiman, Net-A-Porter, everything in between. And you will see what is actually sold in the stores and what is put on the runway. And a lot of it, the colors tend to be on the more wearable side. You'll see a lot of blacks, you'll see a lot of grays, you'll see a lot of camel brown, olive drab, you know, navy blues. Red is practically like a neutral for a lot of people. Uh, So, you know, those are going to be the big sellers. And so, but that's not always what's on the runway. I'm really enjoying putting this together. Like I want to have some softer pastels and some brighter pastels. And then I think I am, you know, I think in the last video people were debating neons versus pastels. And I think I'm going to include some neons. I have these uh, Karen Dosh Fluo, I don't know how to pronounce that, okay. Uh, these Karen Dosh color pencils in these neon pink, yellow, and orange. And I think it'll just add a pop. I'm only making like, you know, little tiny swatches of the neons because I'm not planning on doing like a whole shebang dress in the neons. And then I'm making a shopping list because I'm like, maybe we could use a different lavender. We could use, I, I want different pale yellows. I realize I don't really, I have like one pale light yellow and uh, like a rope color. And <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go to a, like a Home Depot hardware store and just buy some rope in kind of a natural color if I can find it. And If you watched the first season of Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection, you know I did this with paint. And it is better. Well, better is subjective, okay? It is somewhat easier to do with paint because you can mix any color you want. You don't have to figure out like, oh, I'm limited to the markers that I have. So if you don't have a lot of markers, but you have paint, even if you only have a few paints, um, you know that you can make any color happen with CMYK, okay? Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. You know, it's all part of my color series where I do a whole color wheel, you know, all the colors of the rainbow using four tubes of paint. So you could definitely do that. Um, But, you know, I have a lot of marker colors from just, you know, buying markers for years and years and years. So but I still want a couple more and I am taping them into my book because I still am enjoying the messy tape aesthetic and it might end up playing out in the collection somewhere because I'm really feeling this messy tape vibe. And I have a blank piece of paper for white because I am going to include white in that. So yeah, this is kind of my 
kind of rough draft of my color story. I like it. I love the colors. I don't love the neutrals. That's why I want to go to the store and see if I can find some more neutral colors that I fall in love with more, like a better olive drab, maybe a better navy, something, you know, I'm not in love with those, but those are a bookmark colors in my color story. So in the last episode of Watch Me Design a Fashion Collection, I said that I wanted to develop my color story, you know, really figure out what I'm going to do with the color story and finalize the direction. In order to kind of f solidify and finalize my direction for this com collection, I kind of want to rewind and work on the customer profile. Okay, so let's talk about kind of the questions you need to answer yourself in order to kind of put together a customer profile for your brand. Now, if you have an existing brand, then you should have already figured this out before you started your brand. But, you know, in a case like this where I'm just like creating a collection from nowhere with no existing brand, let's talk about customer. So what age range and gender is your customer? So I would say... Like I'm going to skew a little younger than usual. I usually aim like late 30s, 40s, early 50s, kind of that range. But I want to be a little bit more playful. So I'm going to go 25. I'm going to go 25 to 40. Not so much that I intend things to be trendy. I'm not a big trendy designer. I think more in terms of mood and I'm thinking more youthful than anything. And you know, you can be a youthful 100. So it's really that mindset of someone younger and a little bit more adventurous when it comes to their closet. And I'm talking femme presenting, average customer income, I mean, it's up there. I'm going to be working with a lot of beading. Product price point, designer price point. Four, uh, customer's body type and size range. Four to 20. You know, I like... <laughs> I like to represent my mid-sized girls out there, so I'm going to do four to 20 you know, maybe six to 22, somewhere in there. I like that. Customer's lifestyle. I mean, you know, what is their career? What is their job? What are their everyday activities? What are they doing when they're wearing your clothes or accessories? So just like being fabulous. There's this TikTok trend where somebody was saying, you know, how do I explain to people that my hobby is getting really dressed up and doing nothing all day or getting really dressed up and going for coffee? Like there are people and I don't think I'm one of them really. And again, I am not my customer always. And but like there are just people who just like to dress up for whatever the thing is. And I think that's really my customer is just, yeah. Any occasion is a good occasion to look over the top, show stopping, people literally stop you on the street and tell you you look amazing kind of person. Does your product help your customer engage in specific activities? So no, like this is something that I always include in my customer profile in case someone is doing like hiking boots or nursing bras or, you know, the best yoga pants ever. Like, you know, there are people who are really invested in things that help with a particular activity, but this, this really isn't it. I mean, being fabulous is a particular activity, but <laughs> when and how often will your customer wear your product? I mean, these are not everyday clothes. They're event clothes. What is your customer's attitude toward your product category? If your product is a handbag, what is your customer attitude towards handbags? So my product category is event clothes, dresses, like, and, you know, my customer's attitude when it comes to something where it's black tie, red carpet, you know, got to make an impression is really like they want to stand out. They're not really the type to wear an evening column like just a straight 
strapless evening column with some amazing jewelry. There's nothing wrong with that look, but this is not my customer. My customer is much more playful. They like to stand out. They like to wear things that might be a little bit cheeky, a little tongue in cheek joke, you know, that sort of thing. So attitude, want to stand out. How does your customer make their shopping decisions? Is price the most important? Shopping convenience. Is it very important for your customer to look different from everyone else? Yes. Yes to that last one. Does your customer shop for trends or classic investment pieces? Neither, because it's not so much like, oh, pink is such a hot color right now. So I'm going to wear, you know, I need that Valentino pink in every color. Like they don't care. They're just going to gravitate towards the thing that makes them happy. So it's not trend, but it's also not classic. Like it's not a beautiful, perfect trench coat that's going to last you for 20 years. Um, do they trust peer reviews or do they trust big fashion journalism outlets like magazines? Okay. They, you know, I think a lot of people who shop designer price point, they do keep tabs on things like Vogue, Vogue.com, blah, blah, blah. But it's not like, you know, there's enough of a free spirit in there so that they're not, you know, a slave to the trends. They're just like, they like to know what's going on in fashion. They like to see a lot of options and kind of pick and choose like, you know, instead of like, you know how when you open Vogue.com and they always have uh, the most watched shows, the best shows of the season? You know, my customer loves looking at shows and loves keeping up with fashion, but they're not like, oh, well, I have to follow these. And of course, the top 10 best shows, like they're a little bit removed from that. So fashionable, but also independent. Next one, who is your competition? Who is similar to you, but different? Who would hang next to you at a department store? You know, kind of what category would you fulfill? I think Moschino is kind of in this kind of fun, playful. Um, I do like Moschino, but it definitely can get a little bit uh, costumey. So maybe not go that far. I think Rick Owens, but like a lighter, funner Rick Owens. Like Rick Owens can be kind of like heavy and a little morose, a little dystopian. And I want things more light. What else is your customer wearing? So if you're example, making party shoes, what else is your customer wearing with your party shoes? You know, so with my dresses, ugh, they would be wearing those Loewe shoes. Like, I'm so glad I didn't go the complete literal balloon direction because then people would be like, oh no, you copied the Loewe balloon shoes and that's not it at all. But Loewe has always been a little bit um, more fun, like the elephant bag that I'm obsessed with. If you watch my first episode of my podcast, then you know that I've been wanting one of those Loewe ele elephant bags for years. I think Tom Brown, um, I love the animal bags. I think carrying one of those animal bags, especially one of the ones that actually cannot hold very much, would be a perfect addition to, like, you know how royalty and really wealthy women are kind of seen with like this little lap dog? They're, you know, it's kind of like a caricature. I think it would be funny if they were like just like carrying a little tiny Tom Brown dog bag, puppy dip bag in this ridiculous getup, something like that. How does your customer shop? What kind of stores and what websites? Well, they're not shopping at Banana Republic. There's all this news these days about how Banana Republic is revamping itself and how it's become a little bit more expensive and they're going a little bit more high fashion. And I mean, it looks good. And, you know, I've been saying for a long time that Banana Republic needs to get its butt together and uh, button gear and really do something with their brand. And so they're going in this direction and it looks nice and everything. But yeah, my customer is not shopping at Banana Republic. Um, they are doing the whole independent boutique route, running around. You know, this is the end of 2022 and you know, 2020, 2021, the thick of the pandemic, 
like everyone was shopping online. And as, you know, people are getting vaccinated and boosted and traveling more, people have been shopping in person more at brick and mortar stores because they've been so eager to get out of the house. And so online shopping has actually gone down this year. And yeah, you know, my customer is shopping at independent boutiques. They're the kind of person who just wanted to get out of the house and shop and look at fun things. They're also the type to, you know, shop quirky items at like Vestier, like any sort of like secondhand eBay for those finds that, that you know, hard to find vintage items. So boutiques, secondhand, vintage. What media does your customer consume? TV, radio, social media, what podcasts do they listen to? And do they use that to influence their lifestyles and shopping decisions? And yeah, this is more of a well-rounded sort of customer sort of concept where, you know, where are they hearing about brands? Where are they hearing about trends? Where are they hearing about fashion shows, fashion, you know, all these things. And I think in terms of the things that influence their shopping, you know, they are on Instagram, they are on TikTok, and they are following fashion brands, especially fashion brands on TikTok that, you know, they make interesting TikToks. They're independent retailers or fashion designers, and they're not part of the big, like, you know, the Vogue top 10 of every season. And I think that that is fun. Like, you're going to splurge on these items for more independent designers to get more unique looks. And it's not really about having the latest Gucci, the latest Balenciaga. That's not... This person is definitely a fashionista, but not that kind of, there are, you know, all kinds of different fashionistas, but they are not like hounding on every trend that comes out of an LVMH house or a caring house like that. I hope that going through this customer profile, I have kind of painted, illustrated an idea of a customer that's kind of shaping up in your mind so let's let's start thinking about what the direction is. So first of all, it's going to be spring. So designers are, this is December of 2022. So they are designing for fall 2023 right now. So they will, you know, the big design houses, they will showcase their fall collections, you know, February, March of next year. And then they will be producing it over the summer, like spring and summer. And then it will be in stores like tail end of summer through the fall. So I'm kind of, you know, because of my video schedule and all this and how I'm not actually a design house. <laughs> Let's say I'm doing spring, summer 2024. And if I were showcasing this, I would be showcasing it in September, October of 2023. So let's do that. I want party stuff. I want fun, borderline unwearable, but not completely. I still want things to look modern. You know, textures, uh, playful, embellished. You know, don't forget my mind map. Let's go back to the mind map. Oh, I should have done a camel. That was what I originally wanted. I wanted a camel. That's the one. Yo, that's the one. That's why you cannot abandon your mind map. Like I thought I'd remembered what I wanted. And I know I want the olive drab. I still liked the olive drab. But look at this beautiful camel leather. This is a... This is a paperweight, a fabric weight that I, you know, I always have paperweights around. That's the one. Oh, I'm happy now. I'm happy now. Yes. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to the mind map. That's why you gotta write stuff down. You're not gonna remember everything. Oh my goodness. My goodness. Okay. <sighs> Okay, anyway. 
So we're doing party clothes, we're doing ball gowns, we're doing red carpet stuff, but it's like really fun. It's like if the Met Gala, like I want it to look like the red carpet, if the Met Gala theme was preposterous and you had to wear something that looked preposterous. That's the direction. But it's definitely playful. It's definitely over the top. <laughs> okay. I think I got it. We got our customer. We got our direction. You know, the Met Gala said the theme is preposterous. We have our colors. We are good to go. What am I doing next episode? I don't know. You're going to have to watch to find out. All right. Let me know what you think of the color story and how things are shaping up. I also want to know what your projects, how your projects are shaping up. I know some of you are designing along with me. And, you know, in the beginning, I did say that I really wanted to do an all white collection. And, you know, I was only doing this for educational purposes. But like, I'm really feeling it now. Like, I really like this color story now. So yeah, I think, okay, I think it's gonna work out. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Anyway, please do give this video a thumbs up if you had fun watching me uh, struggle with a tape. <laughs> Share, subscribe, you know, update me on your design projects, all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you in the next video.